So I'm to the point of putting the rails on and I'm using the alignment tool. Uh, going from the top of the steel to these rails um, to get it to actually clip in and fit in on both sides. This wants to bow at the bottom. So I got it as close as I could. I forced them up as much as I could. Uh, and it's bowed about the same on each side. And then, so then I did a measure actually from the top of the steel and from the top of these rails. Uh, and it's exactly the same measurement to the bottom of these rails. And the other thing that I did um, was I took my digital level box and I zeroed it out on these bottom frames and then went along and made sure that each of these rails, the surfaces of them were level. And both of them are. Um, I did take an old beer can there and I just cut some little pieces of aluminum out and I actually shimmed uh, in behind the bottom on this side on this one, uh, the, the actual tube, the steel tube here. Uh, I shimmed that on bottom and then the only other shim I had to make was uh, just to go in on the end of this rail here to sort of, because there's just a slight little bit of a twist um, in the instructions when you're assembling your first ball screw for the y-axis. Um, the first picture that it shows, um, it actually shows it in the wrong orientation. It shows him putting it on the opposite orientation. Um, the two shafts, mine at least that came anyway, they already had ball screws on them but they were facing the opposite way so I ended up, uh, I guess I could have cut a little bit maybe off of this install tool, but I ended up sacrificing, since there's an extra ball screw anyway, I ended up sacrificing that one, taking that piece of tubing and actually using it to take the ball screw off, flip it around and reinstall it the correct way. Um, it does later on in the instructions for the y-axis show it in the correct orientation, but I just wanted to make a note of that because it's not, uh, or at least it wasn't completely obvious to me uh, and I actually assembled it incorrectly the first time. sure that you have a uh, 1 8 by 27 tap because uh, the nut um, that goes on by this uh, thrust bearing block uh, the threads on two of the three were all messed up and they weren't messed up on the uh, on the ball screw they were it was the nut that was messed up so and this one here also to get this bearing block on um, the end of this had been pretty damaged so I just had to take a file and keep going around then I used my calipers to find the wide spot and uh, filed that on those two sides and that was enough to allow it to finally slip in there so I got my rails mounted up and I test fit this bed before I had even anything else built because I wanted to make sure that the spacing was going to be correct. These screws, uh, you could put them in one side and they were just enough off on the other side, it wouldn't line up. And with the alignment tool, the reason why I was concerned about that, the reason why I test fitted early is because when I put the alignment tool on, um, this would go just right up to the edge and it would catch on the one little side of this rail over here. So then I had a decision to make. Do I modify this rail and hardware and start drilling all of those holes or well maybe there's an easier way by just drilling out these holes. In order to go through your rail and widen out those holes you would have to be very very careful not to, to mess that up. Whereas with the way that it is with the way that these holes are drilled on here and everything these are perfectly parallel just the spacing the distance between them is just off just very very slightly. So I made the decision that what I was going to do, because these holes are countersunk and because the screws that go into them uh, are tapered, this plate's going to self-align um, as you put them in. All I needed to do was drill them out. So I just went up 1 64th from what the hole was in here, drilled them out. That wasn't quite enough. I went up one more drill bit size, another 64th, drilled it out, deburred them all, put it on here, and I was able to thread all of them in. Everything lined up absolutely perfectly. These two rails are, are completely parallel. They, I knew that they were because I had measured them when I first installed them. They were just slightly too wide and that, that dimension doesn't really make any difference. Um, so now I have it all mounted up with just a little bit of drilling. So here 
during this portion you can see I'm just actually making some brass shims because once I had this all together and was checking my rails, I realized that on the bottom side both needed to be spaced out just a little bit to get that get the frame just a little bit more square and I had to have some brass shim stock that was uh, the exact right size that I needed. This will actually bounce back and forth between 89.95 and 90 degrees and I just tightened each of these bolts up um, 38.7 Newton meters uh, for a black oxide M8 is uh, the minimum torque spec so that's what I went with and I just started uh, alternating X pattern tightening them up and then as I, as, as I was getting closer to the torque spec uh, whichever way this needed to go a little bit I would torque more on that side until um, it clicked and then from there uh, I would just snug the other ones up and if this moved at all that's where the torque spec on those would stay. So anyway, all of these ones on, on this side here, uh, all of these ones are torqued to 38.7. Same on the other side, the only two that weren't, they were only torqued to about 36 Newton meters uh, were the bottom ones on that side. And I would measure it here, I measured it in the middle and I measured it on the other side, zeroing the box to the, the table each time. I wanted to give it a little bit more clarity to my uh, spindle cable wiring. So this is for the four pin. I popped the back off the motor to check and see which color wires were going where. And based off some different pictures and some different stuff I found online, I sort of made assumptions as to which was the W, U, and V. So I made this little diagram for myself um, or I came up with an alternate that it could have been. And so when I actually wired my connector, uh, you can see the ones I have crossed out here um, as to how I was going to, to wire it and which pins were which. Now when it came down to actually doing it, you see I crossed these out. Uh, I swapped one and three because uh, my spindle was spinning the opposite way. So I would say don't worry about this too much when you go to wire it up. Um, just make sure you check your spindle with the multimeter the way it's indicated. Make sure you hook up wires 1, 2, and 3. And if it's spinning the opposite way, then you're just going to swap two wires. Any two will do. I swapped uh, the outer two, which I assume were the U and the W. But, you know, it's not critical. It's just wire it up, and if it's spinning the wrong way, swap two wires. Easy as that. Don't complicate it. All right, so here we are. Mechanical assembly of the DMC2 is mostly done. There's a couple things that I have to finish up. I noticed that uh, when I went to put my um, distribution block for the oil, the oiling system together, uh, two of the elbow connectors uh, were broken. Uh, one had a brass piece actually just completely broken off and the other one is the retaining rings broken out of it so went online and I found some but the best option was just to get them from AliExpress since I don't need them right, right away they'll be here in two to three weeks 
Uh, I guess I could have gotten a hold of Omar to replace those, but why bother? I did have to contact Omar to get uh, the stepper motor cables and the encoder cables, the extension cables. They never came in my kit, and it turns out that that was a, a thing with certain kits in batch too. Uh, they'd forgotten to put them in, so anyway, he sent them out, and they made it to me uh, in just a few days. So. Yeah, so far the build has been pretty good, pretty straightforward. That last bit of the manual, probably the last third of it, there's more mistakes in that than there are in any other part of it. I've already mentioned, I think, in some of the other updates I did, you know, some of the stuff that I found that was off. Uh, but nothing major, like you can figure it out. There's just normal stuff with any CNC that you're going to have to do. I mean, the real test is going to be when I fire this thing up for the first time and uh, really see how square things are, but I mean, so far, it looks really, really good to me. The assembly was pretty much straightforward. Yeah, onward we go. It's all sealed up and uh, onto the electrical. Um, so what I've got coming up for the electrical, I decided that instead of having those stupid little wall wart bricks with you know these crimp on connectors plugged onto them, uh, I'm going to do a dedicated uh, box for at least the power supplies. I haven't decided if I'm going to put the Mach 3 board and the stepper motor drivers and the VFD all in that enclosure. I bought a big enough enclosure, I got it as a prime deal, um, that I can fit everything in there if I, if I want, but at the very least I've got that box, I've got a bunch of DIN rail connectors, and I got a DIN rail mountable 12 volt power supply. Um, so all that stuff is going to go in that box, and I got a bunch of uh, aviation connectors so I can run all my cabling into that and have it be able to be disconnected and uh, have all the stuff that I need right inside there. I think I am going to, at least for the time being, mount the control box uh, and the stepper motor drivers to the back of the DMC2 and see how that works out for me and I can always move it over to the box later on because I'm probably going to have to get more cabling anyway if I want to do that. So yeah, so that's the update for now. Uh, maybe I'll just pull this cover off so you can see what we got going on and uh, we'll leave it there for the update and I'll get on to the electrical next.